the rate. So um, I talk a little bit about my capstone, uh, a children's study on the biblical theology of error. Biblical theology was a little too long. It made my title too long, so I instructed her to the gene film. All right, so just real quick, I'm going to talk about the inspiration, my capstone, the process that I went through, and my vision for the future. So first of all, my inspiration. So there was a couple different factors. Um, the first of which, starting chronologically, was my own experience teaching Sunday school before I came to Sattler. Um, I had the opportunity to teach 10 to 12 year olds at my home church in New York. And going into that, I figured that at this age, they had already heard Bible stories a hundred times and that they probably didn't want to make any more crafts. Um, and so I decided to do just open discussion studies on passages, just like the, much like the adults at the school was doing at our church. So we, we looked, we read the book of James and took a chapter at a time and just did open discussions. We, uh, read through multiple of the minor prophets, Amos, Jonah, I think Joel, and they loved it. They absolutely loved being treated like adults given the opportunity to just talk about it, um, really dig into the passage. And I loved it. It was really, it was a lot. Um, so, and sometimes it was more work, sometimes it was less work, but it was really, really fun to see them really engaging with the material, with the text and getting excited about it. So then coming to Sattler, um, I think the first class that kind of started pushing me in this direction um, was Introduction to Biblical Theology. In this class um actually it was really the first time i'd heard about the theology ironically so my introduction to it and i remember very specifically looked at a number of very like popular common bible stories that get told in sunday school and then we looked at what the deeper meaning is to those bible stories versus how they often get moralized in sunday school uh, one was david and goliath and i that one really stuck with me um and I just came away like, why are we doing this? Why are we um, dumbing it down and giving just these little like pray more and trust in God when there's so much deeper meaning um, to these stories that the Bible is actually trying to, to tell? Uh, the next class that um, started pushing me in the direction of my capstone was Isaiah class. In this class, uh, we had to write a lot of analyses and in those in these analyses, we were supposed to connect um, verses in Isaiah, themes, ideas to other parts of Isaiah or to other texts throughout scripture. And in writing these analyses, uh, I found myself often finding verses about water, about rivers, and finding some really, really exciting connections that just like are really excited me and I loved it. I was super excited about it. Um, and then at this, the same semester, I was taking instructional tools and strategies for teaching reading. And so because of Isaiah class, in in this teaching reading class, we were supposed to write um, some lesson plans for our final project. And they were supposed to, we we're supposed to choose one like theme or idea, and then take that theme across on multiple disciplines. Uh, so because of Isaiah class, I chose water. And then I wrote a lesson plan, uh, a science lesson plan, a Bible lesson plan, all that were connected with water. And so all of these things kind of came together to inspire me to write, to look more into the biblical theology of water, to write a curriculum for children that actually like gives them real Bible study skills. And look, like gives them a chance to look at the deeper meaning in scripture um, and expect more of them, um, allow them to really dig into the text. So that's what I decided to do, to write a Sunday school curriculum for 10 to 12 year olds on the biblical theology of river. So the process. Um, my first, the first part of my capstone was looking at teaching strategies and curricula development. So at first I looked at a lot of the available resources, a lot of the Sunday school curriculums that are already out there um, to get some ideas for my own and see if anybody's doing something similar to what I wanted to do. 
Uh, I also looked at teaching strategies for deeper learning. How do kids learn best? What are the elements of um, of deeper learning? And then I wrote a research paper um, based on my findings. Then I looked at, started digging deeper into the biblical theology of river and wrote um, a research paper on that. That was quite long and should have been longer. <laughs> um, and then writing, finally writing the actual curriculum, which I'm still trying to find a title for. Um, so we're just calling it the river curriculum. Um, but I wrote in writing the student workbook, a teacher's guide, and an examples portfolio, which I'll um, talk more about later. So first of all, looking a little bit more at the teaching strategies and curricula development section of my capstone. So the elements of deeper learning, some of the big things that I took away from that part um, was that children learn best with a certain element of autonomy and, and choice in, in their learning. Um, it creates buy-in. They're much more engaged when it's something that they're excited about and that they've actually like, chosen and have a little bit of agency in learning. And also learning best through self like discovery, have giving, giving being given a task that they have to figure out on their own um, creates much deeper learning because they have to solve the problems themselves themselves rather than being told all the right answers. And then I looked at a lot of popular children's Bible study curricula that, that are out there, and I did not find any curriculums that were looking at biblical theology of a theme. I couldn't find anything. Um, much I found like one or two for adults. I didn't find any for children. Uh, so, and I also, and this was like, was similar to my own experience with science school curriculum that a lot of them did, didn't really have a lot of depth when they're looking at the text. Um, they were meant to entertain, to keep children busy all their parents are sitting in church. Uh, and often they did not, the children weren't learning real skills or actually even ever touching a Bible. Um, that was something that kind of surprised me was a lot of curriculums that they, they hear a paraphrased version of a Bible story and then ask questions and do an activity. They never actually get to read the text, hold the text, look at the text for themselves. And so coming out of this, some of my goals for the curriculum that I wanted to write. So I wanted to do a bit with theology and I wanted to give students a hunger and an excitement for scripture as a result, like being able to see the really cool connections that are actually there and that inspiring and then uh, a hunger to actually read scripture for themselves. And then also just bringing kids into contact with scripture, like letting them actually read it for themselves, teaching kids I would say skills that they can use in the future. And then hopefully that uh, making scripture less intimidating. Um, so they actually, they've done it before. They they have experience interpreting scripture uh, with guidance. And then in the future, they can actually like, hey, I can open a Bible and read and actually understand myself. And another thing was, I found in my research was the idea of giving, so the, the phrase of, Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish, feed him for a lifetime. And so that really kind of being at the core of like what I wanted. I wanted to teach children to fish, to, to study for themselves. And then finally learning through discovery, uh, which I chose to do inductive Bible study to kind of facilitate that. Um, we'll talk more about inductive Bible study for those of you that don't know much about it. We'll talk about that later. So the biblical theology of river paper. So this... Uh, I spent a lot of time researching the theme. I couldn't find anyone who had written on biblical theology of river. Uh, I found one person who wrote on biblical theology of water, which was somewhat helpful, uh, but no one that had written on river. So it really forced me to do a lot of digging into the passages for myself and just like figuring out, okay, what is this theme actually saying? Um, so that included a lot of word searches a lot of help from classmates who are better at using logos than I am and reading a ton of commentaries and comparing um, that what different people are saying on these different passages, even if they weren't specifically looking at river, at least getting an idea of, you know, what this passage is about from different sources. And this was also probably one of the funnest, funnest, most fun um, parts of my cast down 
I love finding these connections and, and putting the pieces together. And it was just really, really inspiring to me. Very, very rewarding. Um, and there's just this like brief moment of euphoria when like suddenly all these connections like come together and we're just like, whoa, your mind is blown. And it just makes you love, love scripture so much more. And so my, the, the thesis of my paper that I wrote then was rivers in scripture represent the outpouring of God's presence as it brings life to the world, transforming, refreshing, and delighting the earth and all humanity. So it, through studying the theme, I came to the conclusion that rivers are a metaphor for the outflowing of God's presence and its life-giving power. I'm not going to try to defend that claim here. Don't have time for that. Did that in my paper, hopefully. Um, so, and I already also attempted to do that at the curriculum to help the students see that for themselves. Okay, so now a closer look at the curriculum. Um, so each lesson plan has a couple different sections. The first section is a bridge, which is uh, begins with just a short blurb that fills as it attempt to fill in the gaps of this storyline. So it provides context um, in the biblical storyline, and then also provides a little bit of information about maybe the literary genre, some key things that the students are going to need to know uh, before they dig into the text. Next section is observe and ask. So this is getting into the inductive Bible study part. So you have a passage, they read through the passage, they write down their questions, their uh, observations, and then you come back together, share your questions and observations, and then you enter into the interpreted connect session. So for every passage, I provided a secondary text, which sometimes the surrounding context, sometimes is a parallel text that talks about, that maybe has a direct quotation, um, but connects to what the passage is talking about to give on just another view, um, to kind of fill out what the text is saying, hopefully to help them answer their questions and make sense of the observations they found in the first section. And then moves on to discussion. Uh, I wrote a couple of different discussion questions to, to kind of make sure that a lot of my discussion questions were based on the the key of, like objectives for the lesson. I wanted to make sure that they got this specific point. So some of them might be a little leading or kind of assume something in the question, but it's just to make sure that the students are actually seeing it and making the connection in a way, making the connection for them, but like leading them to find that connection if they haven't already found it. And then finally, um, I wanted some way for the students to rethink the information that they've learned to process it in a different form. So, but I didn't want to, to make up a little activity or a craft for every single lesson. So my idea was to have a journal slash portfolio and students can do this in two ways. Um, they can do it in writing, processing, reflecting on it and journaling about it or creating like an art portfolio where they represent the text, they illustrate it in some way. Um, and so this is just, I'm going to create an example portfolio also as a final product, just to give an idea of what this could look like. So this is one of the lessons from the student workbook. This is what the student workbook looks like. This is about the teacher's guide. So you have the bridge, the passage, their blanks to observe and ask, interface to next section. Jeremiah 17 is the... Um, interestingly, they're like, oh, pretty much a direct quote from um, Psalm 1. I'm, I'm not sure which is quoting which. Uh, but they, there's a direct quote there, and it shows a little light on what Psalm 1 is talking about. So any questions, and then the prompt. Okay, so finally, my vision um, for the future. So number one, I would really, really love to work with an illustrator in the future to illustrate this curriculum. I think that that would be super helpful for the children, the students. Um, and then also hopefully inspire maybe some of their portfolio illustrations as well. Uh, speaking of illustrations, you may have noticed these super cool photos that I have in my presentation. I'm going to jump talk about this. So this, these come from a uh, website called Full of Eyes. Uh, there's a whole art gallery of what he calls visual exegesis. So the first one is based on Exodus 17, the light from the rock. Second one on Psalm 46, 47, 
which is there's a river whose streams might glad the city of God. And Isaiah 41, 17 to 20, which talks about when God says, when the poor and needy seek water, I will open rivers in the desert in the bare height, in the bare heights and um, provide water. So those are super cool. I don't know if the illustrations for our curriculum will quite be that complex, but um, I think they're pretty cool. And then I think I would, I would like to pursue publishing, maybe. We'll see. But before that, I would really love to do some test runs, teach it through myself, and with a few other churches, individuals that I know are interested in, have them work through it, and they give me feedback as they're working through it. Because So I, I did one lesson with Dr. Schumann's daughter, Rebecca, and one of her friends, and that gave me a lot of insight, and it just made me realize that, as Mr. Ecker says, no plan survives contact with the enemy. <laughs> and especially when you're working with children, you can't, you don't know how all of it's going to play out. So I'd really, really love to work through it and have the chance to um, get me back and also edit it before I send it off broadly. And lastly, um, I'm super grateful for this project. Uh, because through a lot of my research, it got me a lot very interested in teaching in general. And has actually led me to um, what I'll be doing this fall. I'll be teaching high school at Legacy in Ohio. And so super excited about that. And really, it's a result of uh, this project um, and getting the chance to study um, teaching strategies and being very, very interested and inspired by that. So that's all I have.